This is part one of a two-part series. If you like it, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when part two comes out. Hello, Ivy. I've installed the Behringer Vocoder VC16 module. I've got it connected with this MIDI cable to this MIDI keyboard. I've got it connected with this XLR microphone cable to this microphone and I've got the output routed to this output mixer and that's what we're hearing. Quickly reviewing the critical settings we're using the first synthesis engine and with the carrier shape set fully counterclockwise this is going to give us a sawtooth. So let's focus on the formant which is set to the noon position and the envelope sensitivity is also set to the noon position. We have the resonance set to the noon position and the modulator and carrier inputs set to max. Uh, none of the other connections and adjustments matter because we haven't got anything plugged into these inputs. So let's listen to it. I say this video takes an in-depth look at the new VC16 vocoder Eurorack module. Behringer have a great intro video on this module. See a link in the description. This video goes beyond the Behringer intro video with some background on how the vocoder works as well as some examples. Also, the VC16 has several controls and control voltage inputs which allow us to modulate the vocoder using the rest of the Eurorack system. We'll explore some of these possibilities in this video. The vocoder was invented in 1938 at Bell Labs as a means of synthesizing human speech. The word vocoder is a portmanteau or mashup of the two words voice and encoder. Here's a short clip of Daft Punk using a vocoder on their 2001 hit, Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger. Next, I'll explain how a vocoder works. If you already know how it works, skip to the next chapter. Even if you've never heard of a vocoder, you probably have heard a talk box for a guitar. The guitar signal goes into an amp. The amp drives a small speaker which is enclosed in a foot pedal. A tube comes up from the pedal so that the sound can be directed into the mouth of the guitar player. A mic picks up the sound coming from the guitar player's mouth. Let's hear an example from Peter Frampton. Do you think? Do you think? With the talk box, you have a sound source, the amplified guitar. You also have a series of resonators within the human mouth. These resonators are filters which shape the sound. The result is a talking guitar. A vocoder achieves this result electronically. Here's how. A graphic equalizer has multiple fixed frequency bandpass filters. There are level controls for each frequency allowing you to boost or cut the sound at that frequency. Many graphic equalizers have a real-time display showing the energy level of the signal in each frequency band. Imagine you sing into a microphone and route the audio signal into a graphic equalizer. You could encode that input signal by measuring the energy in real time in each frequency band. These energy level measurements are a control signal for each frequency band. The multiple control signals will change in real time as the voice input signal changes. In a vocoder, 
The voice input is called the modulator signal. Now imagine you have a different audio signal, say an oscillator sawtooth output. This signal is routed into another graphic equalizer. If you could control the level of each band of the second graphic equalizer with the control signals from the first equalizer, you would be able to shape the oscillator sound and make it talk or sing. The oscillator input is called the carrier signal. It's like the guitar input to the talk box. The carrier is modulated by the second equalizer to shape the sound, much like the mouth of the player shapes the guitar sound with the talk box. So, to recap, a vocoder is a device which detects energy of the modulator signal in each of several frequency bands. This modulator is usually a voice speaking or singing into a microphone. It then uses that energy level control signal of each frequency band to control the level of the corresponding frequency band of the carrier signal. This carrier signal is often an oscillator or several of them. With that background, let's discuss the VC16. The carrier signal is a digital oscillator within the VC16. The pitch is controlled from a MIDI keyboard or a CV gate input. With MIDI, up to three notes can be played at once. You can also substitute an external carrier at the carrier end socket. In this case, you could have a fully polyphonic carrier signal. The modulator signal comes from the mod end socket. This can either be an XLR mic cable or a quarter inch patch cable. There's a switch on the back of the VC16 to enable a preamp for a mic level input to the mod end socket. Alternately, the switch can be set to line level. With that theory of operation in mind, let's quickly review the front panel inputs and controls. This diagram is from the VC Quick Start Guide, page 16. First are the carrier related controls. There are six synthesis engines, and we can select them with these buttons and basically they're just different waveforms most of them are common waveforms and you have a carrier shape knob number three which controls variations on the waveforms for instance you have a ramp a triangle and a sawtooth for this synthesis engine number one you have the carrier shape modulation input socket, number five, and the associated attenuverter knob, number four. You have a frequency knob, number nine, which tunes the modulator when a CV gate input is used. You have the FM socket, number 13, which allows external modulation of the internal carrier frequency and you have the associated FM knob number 12. This attenuverter controls the level of FM. You have the carrier end socket number 16 which overrides the internal synthesis engine and allows you to use any external sound source as your carrier. You have the carrier level knob which controls the level of the carrier in signal and those are your carrier related controls. Next you have the bandpass filter or resonator controls. You have the resonance knob number eight which sets the resonance of the VC16 filters. You have the formant knob. We use this to change my voice from normal to small to giant in the welcome intro to the video and you have the envelope sensitivity knob number seven which controls the release of the carriers VCA envelope it has an immediate attack it's basically an AR envelope and this controls only the release of that the modulator related controls include the modulator in socket or mod in and it accommodates both XLR for a microphone and quarter inch for other 
audio signals as the modulator. And you have an associated modulator level knob in order to trim that level. You have the audio out socket, number 19, which outputs at Eurorack levels. The last group is the keyboard controls. You have a MIDI DIN input socket, number 17. And you can see the quick start guide for how to change the MIDI channel using these controls. The default is channel 1. You have a USB-C input, number 20, for MIDI over USB, as well as configuration and firmware updates using the Synth Tribe app. You have the CV socket and gate socket. CVN is 1 volt per octave, is a keyboard control voltage input, and the gate in is expecting 0 to 5 volts. So that completes the quick survey of the front panel. That concludes part one of this series on the Behringer vocoder VC16. We've covered the fundamentals in this first part, including the theory and the front panel. In part two, we'll be putting the pieces that we've learned in part one to work with some different use cases, taking advantage of the capabilities of this VC16 within the context of a Eurorack system. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.